This is inspired by people out and about, really. And I'm kind of fascinated by this idea that everyone's got their own story and this kind of graphic depiction of people in regular places kind of really excites me. I've always been quite observant of things and imagining how you would paint them or how you would uh, illustrate them. And I think I've always, always enjoyed painting whatever form that is. It was quite clear at college that I was, I, I maybe wasn't the, the best mathematician and all the other areas of study were kind of crumbling around me. And I, I think that was due to wanting to put all my eggs in the kind of creative basket. I, I, only, I only saw that as an as a exciting future for me personally. As I got older, I realised that there were certain possibilities with drawing that were more than just for fun and for enjoyment. It was kind of possibly a, a, a life choice. So I managed to luckily get work in a design agency in London and from there, I kind of learned the ins and out of design and found found the style that I'm, I'm working in today. So it was kind of a, a gradual process that kind of evolved over time. It wasn't, it wasn't immediately obvious, really. I'm fascinated by this idea that these places are real, but also could be from a memory or the way that you imagine places to be. When you're younger, I felt like the work had to maybe have a meaning or a message or kind of maybe cause a reaction, but then I realised that it's more about the design side of it and the, and the beauty of images that are telling a story in a way that is is not just purely to get a reaction, but to actually say, this is the way I see the world and this is the way that I want people to see it in a kind of stylized way. Everywhere you are, the influence and the inspiration is, I find, really. And kind of if I'm, if I'm somewhere that's coastal, I'm always drawn towards boats and drawn towards the sea. And if I'm in a city, I'm drawn towards people, bars and cafes. So it's, it's quite apparent that where you put yourself is where the influence and inspiration is, really. There's something about especially since living in London, the kind of liveliness to it. And there's, I like to know really what people are about and what, what they're doing. I'm fascinated by what's going on, I guess. It's kind of always fascinated me that. And it's one of the reasons why I like capturing people in potentially quite relatable situations. When you go on the underground and when you go past the river and there's kind of so much going on, there's so much diversity as well. It's a constant source of inspiration for my work. When you look at the image, you can almost place yourself in that story as well. The hard part is coming up with the composition and, and working out the content for the image and from there I often sketch fairly fairly rough drawings the hard bits done it's then about spending the time refining those shapes and the idea and adding in things like color <laughs> come together the forms seem to harmonize with one another and the balance of the composition almost plays into each other in a way that's pleasing you, you, you feel that sense of 
of kind of achieving what you set out to do. I think this idea of using light to capture form is, is, is fascinating. The kind of single, single shape that adds this kind of ambiguity, but you're, you allow yourself to make up the rest of the form, and this is the thinking here, this kind of pensive character and this, this smoke rising from the cigarette and everything about it was almost trying to capture this sense of kind of hidden form, really. When illustrating people and figures, I, I find that by leaving out certain features, maybe it's the, the shadow over the nose rather than showing the eyes, it allows the viewer to kind of not associate too much with that person and you can almost put yourself in their shoes and I kind of like the idea that when someone is looking at a particular image they can embody those characters and, and picture themselves there. It took a long time to start um, making quite confident decisions and trusting yourself. And I think it's, again, down to repeating your craft and through time and evolution, you, you naturally, a bit, a bit like a handwriting, really, where you can ask 10 people to write something and it'll all be ownable to that person. I, I think illustration's the same, where they may be inspired by it, but the... The uniqueness is, is there in everyone and it's, and it's why you get such a range of styles. I think nature has been represented in various ways and I'm kind of fascinated by it myself. It's, it's quite difficult in this part of London to get get the full nature experience in terms of kind of greenery and and, and the leafiness. So luckily, live live near Hampstead Heath, where it's quite nice to go out there and and take in more natural subjects to get inspired by. There's so much detail in it, and there's so much beauty in nature that when when it comes to illustrating it it's kind of the challenge is how do you distill it down and capture the essence of a place whether it be a lake or a tree this kind of the challenge of tackling it in your own way and I and I love trying to capture the the spirit of a place In terms of how long an image takes, it often depends on the level of detail and the complexity of it. Uh, sometimes it might just be a single figure. That's something that you can create perhaps in four or five hours, but there's some images that just require a lot of commitment and time and spend days on it. I think a lot of the time when trying to capture the essence of a place, I, I often romanticise the scene and, and almost try and capture it as if how you want to remember it, I guess. I kind of leave out a lot of the, the gritty stuff and, and create this scene as if it were how you'd, how you'd like to remember it. A deadline is, is, is a lovely thing to have and it, and it actually stops you making excessive decisions and if someone says you've got two months to deliver one image, you know, you can go back and forth with that for far too long in your own head and, and if someone says we need this by Friday and it's a Wednesday afternoon, you, you make quite confident decisions and often they're, they're the right decision because your instincts are normally pretty good.
The feeling when you finish a piece of work is, is a mixture, really. It's kind of relief that you've achieved what you set out to do and also a kind of longing to create it almost immediately after, again, because you, you constantly want to develop. There's something about the tools of today that allow you to be inc incredibly in, in control of your decisions. So when you're creating shapes and when you're deciding colour, these things are all really important. And, you know, in, in Photoshop, I often find that flexibility and that, and that editability to be kind of amazing. I feel like now everything is very disposable and often very temporary and everything is almost dismissed. And I quite like the notion that you can spend a bit of time pausing in an image and it, it conveying a sense of tranquility, maybe give people the, the calm that is often needed nowadays. I've, I've realised a lot of the work that I, I create is trying to romanticise the world in a way. I'm, I want the images to look like how people would like to remember their time somewhere. It's almost like the rose-tinted world, almost a moment of calm in a very busy day and age is something that I, I strive to achieve. <laughs>